Dance your cares away, worries for another day. Here's your look at the new Jim Henson's Fraggle Rock vinyl mini series from the folks over at Kid Robot. Yes, let the Fraggles play. If you are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, some good news, my friends and colleagues. Jim Henson's Fraggle Rock vinyl miniseries is now available at your local comic book stores. Or, one better, why not mosey yourself over, maybe I'm not going to say mosey for any more of this review, but mosey yourself over to www.kidrobot.com and you can get yourself an entire case or individual boxes if you so wish. We're going to go ahead and get this opened up. And, uh, of course, we're going to have a look at an entire case consisting of three across, four back, times two, landlord on the bottom, tenant living on the top. That gives us a total of 24 boxes that we're going to be opening up. So this would be a good time that if you had a muffin sitting in the fridge, get that muffin, get that glass of milk, sit down and peruse the following 24 boxes as we open them up on this channel. Who else show uh, of hands out there? Who else grew up watching Fraggle Rock? Anybody? Anybody? A lot of Canadian hands will probably be putting their hands way up. Fraggle Rock was certainly a staple for this household child. Watching Fraggle Rock, I think it used to be on every Sundays on CBC. This is what one of the individual boxes look like. Now, you would just imagine that looking at this box, it would be the exact same for the remainder 23. On the front, we've got various characters from Fraggle Rock. What's your favorite Fraggle? Anybody? Anybody? I always liked Gobo. I was really was a big fan of Gobo and Red. Here are, those some of the names listed on the side. This is going to be on the other side there as well. Gobo, Red, Moki, Wembley, and Boober. I actually kind of like Boober as well. There's also a Doozer, a Doozer 2, an Architect, and a Cotterpin Doozer. And then also there's going to be a smaller mystery character. I'm not actually quite sure what one this may be. But of course we're going to open this up and find out together on the underside. You can go over to www. Mosey your way on over. I'm not promising I'm going to say it for the rest of this review. www.kidrobot.com. Head over there and see some of the cool vinyl collectibles that Kid Robot is currently producing. Let's go ahead without any further ado. And we're going to go ahead and get the first box opened up. And I got some sad news, though. My uh, my bottom, well, not my bottom, but Red's old bottom, old Red's bottom, has gone missing. I don't know where it went to. I'm going to put an APB out for old Red's bottom. Nonetheless, though, we're going to open up the first box, get these all opened up. I hope to get at least a couple of doozers. Remember they used to build those buildings? Oh, is this one of them? No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, this is, let's again have a look at that. That's Boober. And I actually, I just looked at this because I wanted to see what the quantity, because it's all about me giving you guys the 411. What's the quantity per each character? It seems with my little eye, because I do have one smaller eye than the other, it seems to me that most of these, most of these are either three or, oh, sorry, I was covering, I was covering that up. Three or two out of 24. At the very least, you're going to be getting yourselves probably duplicates of each one of these, which is actually a good thing, because if you're buying these at local comic book stores, you want to be able to think that you're going to be able to get at least the whole set. And with them not being one of 24, it does better your chances. Now I'm going to just look into, I'm going to look inside the bag and see if there's no accessories. I just don't want to make sure I've left off any accessories. But again, we have Boober. I was like, kind of liked Boober. I mean, really, I here I am throwing out names. I liked Gobo. I liked Red. Pretty much, I liked all of them. Really, Traveling Matt. I don't see Traveling Matt anywhere on here. Maybe possibly a series two. You never know. Uh, as for Boober, uh, he is a cute little guy. You can of course not see any of his eyes. I don't know if he can even see you. He'd probably be doing a whole lot of <sighs> blowing his hair up a lot of the times. Um, as you can see, he's got his little fraggle tail. Uh, same standard kind of posability as you would expect with a lot of these kid robot vinyl pieces. Head rotates, arms rotates, and that is all. Very vibrant color here on Boober. Very, very cool. I'm going to put that to the side, and I'm sure there's going to be a whole lot of clutter forming over here. So I'm going to draw your attention over here. Don't want to 
point out the fact that I've got a bit of a mess it's gonna be starting to form very, very shortly as we resume with box number two. It was felt as if Fraggle Rock really just didn't get the, the love that some of other Henson's creations did. Would you put up Fraggle Rock in the same sort of tier as perhaps The Muppet Show or perhaps Sesame Street? I feel like most people wouldn't. Even though technically, really, there was a Fraggle Rock cartoon too, so that had to be something. If you're gonna be made into a cartoon, well, that's gotta mean that at least you've you've met street cred. I almost just popped off poor Boober's arms. Oh, I'm popping his arms off. What's going on here? Let's just pick up his arm. There we go. Just pop the arm in place. Luckily, everything is just pegged quite easily in place. So if you do move the arm, for example, and inadvertently, because you don't want to be deliberately doing this, but taking the hand off, it's as simple as popping that back into place. I'm pretty sure even the doozers wouldn't be able to put their buildings back into place because after all, those fraggles certainly love those doozer buildings, which apparently tasted like mustard. If that's about the only takeaway that I remember as a child. I remember at some point, whatever episode it was, they had mentioned that the doozers buildings tasted like mustard. In fact, it is of one of the useless facts, the many of the useless facts that I have in my noodle. One day I'm hoping that I'm gonna to go to like a costume party or royal gala, if I would ever be invited by royalty, and somebody just in the background, I'm grabbing myself a beverage and somebody in the background just happens to say, you know, I often wondered what, a f what flavor the Doozers buildings were from Fraggle Rock, and I would just immediately spin right round like a record baby right round round. And I'd say, hey, I just happen to know. Let me just let you know on that. Now, I believe this is also the mystery character right there. And I think that's Sprocket, if I'm not mistaken. Sprocket. Good old Sprocket. The tail looks like it has pegged. Oh, okay. It pegs this way. You'll see there's a kind of a half circle, half circle hole. Circle gets the square. A lot of old 80s references probably being thrown around in this video. The tail should plug into place. As you can see right there, there's one side, there's the other side right there. Did I happen to get the tail come off in the bag? Oh no, oh no, he says aloud. I probably have to get a little bit of glue and just glue that into place. It does seem like it's, a, well, I don't know if it's supposed to be coming off. There's like a little bit of paint on the inside there. I'm gonna have to get some glue and glue that into place. Look at little tiny sprockets. This isn't actually one-to-one -one scale, because if you really put him next to Boober, uh, he is a lot bigger than Boober. I mean, these, these Fraggles are little tiny guys. And girls, and girls. Sprocket also comes included. It would be horrible if this wasn't his name. It is Sprocket. Yeah, it is Sprocket. Ha ha ha! Not a useless, not useless information. I did actually know Sprocket's name as well. Dry mustard. I think it was dry mustard. It might have just been regular mustard. Might have even been spicy mustard. I don't know. It was mustard nonetheless. Gonna go ahead and open up the next box. We are now four in. Are you excited? I'm excited. Can you almost taste it in the air, the excitement level of this humbled reviewer as he's opening up these boxes of Fraggle Rock, which I might also might also add is also available right now at your local comic book stores or www.kitrobot.com. What do we got going on in here? We've got ourselves, is this a doozer? It is. Now I'm going to just reference over because I want to make sure I'm providing you guys with the proper 411. Far be it for me to give you a false 411. I'm not all about that. So I'm going to tell you that this is the Cotter Pin Doozer. I don't know what specifically makes this one a cotter pin doozer. I guess for the fact that all the other doozers are wearing construction hats. These are all the ones that are working. I guess these are the supervisors. I hope they're paying them proper benefits, health benefits, the occasional snack if they're hungry. I don't suspect the doozers are eating their own buildings. That would be kind of ridiculous. I mean, you're, you're, you're really eating into your profits. You ever hear the, t the term, you're eating into your profits? That would be what a doozer would be doing if occasionally Gary's just turning around and Frank's just nibbling away on the architect, on the architecture. You don't want that. If that was the case, I'm pretty certain he wouldn't be coming back the next day. <laughs> They'd get, get rid of him. They'd come up with some reasoning. You know, you're, you're always late. You always come late, you always leave early. We're gonna have to just let you go. So you just so I know you're not letting me go because I'm eating the buildings, right? Oh no, no, no. 
no, no, we wouldn't be able to fire you for those. We'd have to fire you for the fact that you're coming in a little bit late all the time. And then you're always like, phones ringing all the time. Oh, I got to rush home. We know you really weren't rushing home. But the truth is, his work actually, his work ethic is pretty good. They just want to get rid of him for the fact that he's just eating away the, the buildings. Uh, we've got ourselves, while I was yammering away, I was yammering away, we've got another cotter pin doozer. I got two of them, got two of them. Now, actually, that one was three of 24. So I will believe along this journey here, we're gonna find another one. That's my guess, that's my guess. We are actually about halfway through. You know, kind of like when you talk during a trip somewhere in a car ride, when you're taking a car ride somewhere. If you're making conversations with the people that are also in the car, you'll find you'll get to that destination a little bit faster science explanation behind it no scientific explanation it's just the fact that time goes by a little bit faster when you're spending it with friends isn't that nice speaking of friends uh this one this cotter pin doozer has many friends a total of three well he's got two she's got two other friends total of three and I don't think I even spent any time to discuss the posability on this but let me go ahead and do that right now head arms I don't know if I even sent, said that for sprockets, but let's go ahead. Sprockets, head rotates all the way around. Technically, I don't know if the tail would have had posability. I can't imagine based on the way it would have been pegged into place, you would have been able to rotate the tail. And just while I wanna record this for the books, I didn't break the tail. I didn't. It, it came out of the bag like that. I had no touching of all of this tail in the way the tail would have been broken. I had nothing to do with it. You can go back and review the footage if you want. And this is actually a good example of where you would be able to review the footage because you're literally watching the video of me opening this all up. As I say that, I'm going to be opening up yet another box. Kind of funny how this works. Let's open up the next one. I'm already starting to develop a pile all around me. Hopefully, I've kept it relatively clean in this perspective. If this part is clean and all the rest of it is just a train wreck, you guys aren't even going to see it. That's called being professional. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not. Got a little foil bag. Anybody wants it? Anybody? Dibs? Dibs on the foil bag? Dibs on the foil bag? No? No? Okay, we're going to put that down. Uh, we've got ourselves red. Now, red looks a little strange because she is missing her pigtails. Gonna pop open one pigtail, and while we're also at it, we're gonna pop open the second pig pigtail. That's two pigtails. One of which, one of which I dropped on the floor. Uh, let's have a look here. The shapes, going back to preschool teachings, I'm gonna say that this shape goes into that hole and not this one over here. I guess it could, but then that would just look absolutely ridiculous. So that's gonna plug into place on one side. We're gonna go ahead and repeat the steps on the other side. There you go. I just gave you guys a tutorial, a hair tutorial. And there's red. Red, by the way, in, for inquisitive minds, I just wanna let you know that red is two of 24. So get used to seeing this one because you're at least gonna see it one more time. I hate to be the one that spoils things by giving giving the ending of the movie away, but I have to admit, if the story that you're watching is Red Fraggle, there is going to be a sequel. You're going to probably see a whole lot of the same, just done done again. It worked so well the first time around, the studio said, you know what, let's just recreate what, what was so successful with the first time, and we'll do it a second time. Somebody's right now saying, this guy's talking way too much. Just open up the blasted rest of the case. I will, I will. Let me get right to that. Get to stepping. I'm going to get right to stepping. I like to think that when you come to a channel like this, sure, of course, you're coming for the steak. The steak being the unboxing here. But I like to add all the other sprinklings as well. I'm sort of the parsley that gets sprinkled around the side of the steak. Does it need to be there? No, but... It does make the meal somewhat a little bit more enjoyable for the fact it's got all this extra stuff around as well. At least that's my mentality. I'm probably completely wrong by saying that. Oh, hey, look, we've got ourselves a sequel. A red sequel. I guess, could we go through the notions, the motions of getting the hair all out? Why not? Why not? It seemed so good the first time around. I thought my tutorial went relatively well, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it a second go around. And this time, I know what I'm doing. 
It's almost like I've done this before. Pegging half circle shapes in the top of the heads. There we go. Red on, now automatically has a twin. Did you know that? I didn't know red had a twin. Red's got a twin. Okay, so we are now about, what are we looking at here? What are we looking at here? We're looking at some glue. Got some glue on the boxes. So I'm just going to take that off. They almost look like little fibrous hairs. You can see right there, the glue. It looks like, actually, it kind of looks like spider webbing. Let's hope it's not spider webbing. I don't want to open up the box and be attacked by a little venomous spider. If that does happen, by the way, let this sort of mark as a time capsule for the events that are going to unfold. I don't even want to jinx. I don't even want to talk about that, really. Spiders are the one thing I do not like. So I don't even want to joke about the idea of having this bag open up and being attacked by venomous spiders. I don't even know if you would say... Would you say venomous spiders? I don't know. Uh, here we have Moki. Good old Moki. Moki, actually, let's just do some size comparisons. Moki is a little bit taller than Red. And also, while we're at it, Moki is a little bit taller also than Boober. And also, while we're at it, Moki is a little bit taller, considerably taller than the Cotterpin Doozer. Uh, you would hope so. You would, you would hope that the Fraggles would be a little bit taller than the Doozers. Uh, head, by the way, head articulation, arm articulation, because I know somebody just yelled out in the back, what's the articulation? Articulation was what I just said. Arms and head. That's three points of articulation. Three. I'll open the, up the next box here. As I said, as I'm repeating for new viewers right now, coming into this video, which I don't even know if that's possible, if you are wondering where you can pick these ones up for yourself, let me be more than happy to answer that question by saying your local comic book store, or you can once again head over to www.kidrobot.com.com. I think most of the time when you do your search, you don't even have to put .com, you can just put Kid Robot or www.kidrobot. I think you could, I, I think it's Kid Robot. You, could, you probably don't need to put the .com. The .com gets auto-populated for you. Is that a tutorial? No, it's not. That's not a tutorial. That's just for me doing things myself when I was looking up. I looked up like Hotmail, and I forgot to put in the .com one day, and sure enough, it took me to Hotmail. I think I might have actually put www.hotmail. I don't know. That's, that's not a really valid tutorial because you would need enough physical, uh, physical facts to, to, of course... Um, be an actual tutorial. Why are we talking about tutorials? What are we talking about tutorials for? We're looking at an architect, my friends, according to the side of the box. He is 3 of 24. Kind of also looks like Sam Crenshaw from today's special. There you go. I'm dating myself and I'm also saying I'm Canadian. I'm sure you guys already know I was Canadian. You guys ever even heard of today's special? Took place in a department store. Jeff was a mannequin. He... Whenever he lost his hat, he would turn back into a mannequin. Sam Crenshaw. Anybody? Nobody? Okay, that's fine. For the people that are in the know, just between you, me, and that guy over there, I once met Jody where I used to work. Jody from Today's Special. I actually said, the words left my mouth, and I said, hey, wait a minute, are you Jody from Today's Special? And I guess she was happy to be acknowledged for the fact that she had done that at one point. She said, yes, I am. I'm like, I love today's special. That actually is a true story. Uh, we have ourselves another architect. They kind of look like they should glow in the dark. They're kind of radiating almost if they're radioactive. I assure you they're not. Oh, my. No, they're not. I, I shouldn't even joke about that. Shouldn't even joke about that. They're not radioactive. Nobody, nobody get alarmed. They're not really radioactive. There's the other side right there. They are happen to be the same coloring. No other doozers, but we do have the, like I said, the Cotter Pin doozer and the Architect right over here. About the same. A uh, little bit smaller. Architect's a little bit smaller. I don't know who really is in charge. Architect kind of dictate. I don't know. That's not true. That's not true. I was going to say the title would kind of make me think that he would be in charge, but for all I know, the Cotter Pin doozer is probably the one that runs the show. The one that gives the Gives the unions the good benefits and all the perks, all the perks of being a doozer working for her union. The occasional muffin, you know. Get a little snack truck that pulls up every once in a while. 
she's just stopped. Yeah, you know, they're looking at their watch. They're kind of looking at her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead, you. Go ahead, you schmoes. Go get your. Go get your snacks. Uh, we've got ourselves yet another, yet another architect, which I guess meets the quota. I mean, doozers have a quota. I've just met my quota for architects. The quota was three. I've met my quota. I can go home. I can take my little, my little paper card and psh, stamp it. Psh, stamp it in that little clock. Does anybody still have those anymore? Little clock, you know, you take your card. Psh, psh. They don't make that noise. I'm just... Apparently, I'm imagining that's what the noise is that it makes. It doesn't really make that noise. Uh, I feel another hefty box in my hands. Another hefty bag, I should say. Which makes me think we've got ourselves. I'm just checking for, just quickly, quickly checking for accessories. I didn't want to make sure no accessories left behind. We got another, we don't have another. This is actually the first one. We have Wembley. Wembley. Wembley is, if anyone was curious, 2 of 24. Now, anybody looking, of course, at the case of 24 boxes, this would be 2 of 24, so you can pretty much come to the safe assumption that we're probably going to be seeing Wembley yet again. Some scale comparisons? Of course I can do that. There you go. Wembley is about the same size as Moki. There you go. And size-wise to red, Wembley is a little bit taller. Just want to also mention too that I have not yet seen a gobo. I know he's in there somewhere. Maybe he's off sending off a letter to traveling Matt. It's so funny. I'm talking about all these Canadian show references. I don't even think Fraggle Rock was a Canadian show. It just happened to be on a Canadian channel. Anybody who didn't grow up with Fraggle Rock probably has no idea what I'm talking about. Do yourself a favor, please. Do yourself a favor. Go check out Fraggle Rock awesome show i love that show i also even love the traveling matt segments because he would always be traveling around as the namesake would say he'd be traveling around like malls and crossing the street with other you know the uh regular humans because he would be a little bit smaller traveling matt and whenever they walked they kind of i didn't take puppetry or anything like that puppeteering but that's one of the things they teach you you have to exaggerate the walks of course, you also don't want to see your hands, so it'd have to be like, they look around. Puppeteering 101. That's another tutorial. <laughs> That's another tutorial for you. All right, so let's see what we got here. I'm going to start in the middle here. I started my way here, but I kind of felt, I felt a little bit more comfortable working down the middle. I'll pull out the next bag. I'm looking at my time here. Producers are like, you, 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 snack truck, snack truck. Producer's shaking his head. He's like, no, it's not the snack truck. When they start going like this, or like this, that's usually, you gotta wrap it up. You gotta wrap it up. Show's ending. What do we got here? What do we got here? We've got Doozer 2. I did actually have to reference the box. I wanted to make sure that I didn't incorrectly give you information. That's Doozer 2. Uh, Doozer 2 does have the mustache. Hat is not removable. Hat is not removable. But it is, uh, that's the difference. Doozer 1 has a gold or yellow hat. Doozer 2 has the pink hat. Also, with the addition of the mustache. Doozer 1 sans la mustache, without the mustache. Parlez français un petit peu, just a little bit. Look at all the stuff you guys are learning in this unboxing. Again, I'm the little bit of parsley, a little bit of parsley that's sprinkled around the side of the steak. You don't really need it necessarily, but I'm putting it there just to kind of make that steak just seem just a little bit more ooh la la. Oh, Francais, un petit peu. We've got ourselves another doozer, doozer two, with the mustache, dons la mustache. That's actually in the mustache, that's not proper French. The key is, though, for speaking any language, uh, if somebody else isn't familiar with that language, you can basically just say anything. Occasionally, I just say to friends and family, bonhomme um de neige. I just kind of wave them. Bonhomme um de neige. See you later. Bonhomme um de neige. I did that once around a bunch of friends, and one actually did call me on that. He's like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't bonhomme um de neige snowman? I said it is. Then I think I said... Dizatatsuni, which I think translates to United States. So it's like Bonhomme de Neige, Dizatatsuni, 
this guy speaks French so well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, what else do we have here? We've got another Moki. Moki makes two, two of 24. Got another one there. I didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about this because I've just been kind of mambling on about other things, making up words also while I was doing that. But uh, these are very vibrantly colored. Look how vibrant these are, drawing your attention to the vibrancy of these colors. I love the really light purples and lilacs. Would you even call that like lilac? Very, very colorful. All of these very, very colorful. Okay, let's go ahead. Now this one feels a little bit lighter. Whatever it is that was inside, I've certainly concussed by shaking the box back and forth. Un petit parler au français. Bonhomme de neige. Let's go ahead and open up the next bag. And we are also, I'm just looking at the tally here. Mm, 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 mm. Carry the one. We're looking at six. Six left. Got ourselves another doozer. Doozer number two. Doozer dose number two. I'm going to put him right over there. That has now three doozers. I think actually we're three of everything. We're, th well, not of the fraggles, but at least of doozers. We're three of them. Got three of them in. I just always think that they were dozers. I think I was a dozer for thinking that their names were dozers. I, doozers. D O O Z or Z E R. I don't think we're going to be getting another sprocket. I shed one lone tear for the fact that poor sprocket, this sprocket, has a tail that came off. Let's see if I can try to fix that. I want to repair, put sprocket right back to the way sprocket should have been when I got him out of the box, out of the bag. Uh, we've got ourselves now at the doozer number one. And as a comparison, so you guys can see side by side, uh, even like their bodies are different. Doozer 2, with the mustache, has a pencil. He also seems to have a calculator. This is the more calculated, smarter Doozer. I don't know, it's generalizing, but I'm kind of looking at the things that are on his belt and harness right now. And I'm thinking, this guy is the thinker. This guy plans things all out. This one is the worker. He's got a hammer, he's got a wrench, and apparently he's got a whip. He's Indiana Jones of the Doozers. You would think that would elevate him to the next pay grade. He doesn't really handle machinery all that well, kind of drives into things, and they often say, I don't think, I don't think Frank knows where he's going. He's just he's driving into buildings, he, he's eating buildings. He's a hard worker, and also he collects relics. In the, in the meantime, he collects little, tiny, little trophies he finds in ruins. That looks great on a resume, by the way. I explore temples, I collect little artifacts. Oh, and also I build buildings too. Oh, well, that's that's really, none of the really other things was relevant to the type of job that you're applying for, but now that you've said you can build buildings, welcome, welcome aboard. Come on board, the Doozers Union 47. We got another one here, which actually is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, none of these doozers being in duplicates, triplicates, quadruplicates, or so on, having them more than one is actually a good thing because you can have them building things. I think the doozers' buildings, didn't they just look like little clear rods? I don't. Did we ever really see what a finished doozer building was going to look like? Would we imagine eventually if we had just left it and didn't eat the building that maybe the doozers would have actually put up a foundation, you know, like little brick walls, windows? A little nice balcony, maybe light fixtures. I don't know what else would what else would they have done if they're only just building a frame from what looks to be plastic clear straws. I would have to really question the pay rate that these guys are pulling in. I mean, if you're pulling in like twenty five, thirty dollars an hour, and you're just building like you know squares and I don't know, I'd, I'd be questioning who's going to be living in these buildings. Are the people living in these buildings completely content for the fact that there's no windows, there's no doors? I mean, it, it kind of eliminates privacy, really, when you think about it. Do they rent out these buildings? I know I'm overly thinking this, but is this like a commercial building or is this a residential building? These are things, these are questions you probably didn't have up to the point of watching this review, so you're very welcome for now me throwing out useless questions that now you're going to be lying awake late at night wondering. Mom's going to be like, okay, it's time to, time to go to bed, Billy. What's wrong, Billy? Billy's got like, just, Billy's just bawling. What's the matter, Billy? Oh, no, 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 I'm just, 
just thinking about those doozer buildings. Are they commercial? You know, do they rent these out to people? And mom's like, I have no, I have no idea what he's talking about. I have the foggiest idea. And then she just watches this video and she's like, you know, this reviewer is absolutely right. What were the doozer buildings? Were they commercial? Did they rent it out to people? Would they have had a landlord that then would buy the property and then rent it for something else? Would you lease that building? What kind of contracts were required for this building? Thank goodness, really, when you think about it, the Fraggles actually did eat these buildings because I don't even think the Doozers themselves knew what they were building. They kind of sort of just built it with the intent that they were going to get demolished and eaten by the Fraggles. While I was talking away about commercial and residential, by the way, one can't help but notice, if you were paying attention, that I got myself a Gobo. Now, I don't want to be somebody that's going to give this away, the very ending of this movie, but there are two in the back. I grabbed one, and if you also just feast your eyes on this, Gobo is 3 of 24. Now, anybody uh, probably will instantly know where I'm going with this. These are all Gobos. Somebody's like, ah, oh, shucks, why did you have to give that away? I didn't mean to give it away. I'm just just telling you guys. So we got two more boxes. Yeah, I know you guys. You guys already know where this is going. It would be an, a great surprise now if like the this one was a gobo and then like the last box out of nowhere was snuffle up against from Sesame Street and they're like, wow, Kid Robot actually pulled one over on us. I didn't. I didn't see that one. I didn't see that one coming at all. So the second last one, to no surprise, is Gobo, my personal favorite Fraggle. Uh, the tails, by the way, if somebody was wondering, the tails are slightly softer plastic. Uh, they do not rotate though. Don't rotate them, you're going to break the tails. The head rotates back and forth. Kind of looks like he's got a slightly translucent plastic leg, more solid arms. Must admit, it does look good. And there is, of course, uh, next to him, Moki. What unique names. Jim Henson was just a one heck of a guy. Just one heck of a creative genius. The world is slightly more empty just because, you know, he's not around anymore. I know he's, his son's still carrying on the Henson name. Still bringing joy and entertainment to children. Kind of like I would hope this video has been. I mean, I've rambled on about other things. Commercial leasing and benefits. Oh, where's the tail? Oh, the tail fell off. Let me just... Let's see if I can replace... I think the tail on... There we go. All right. Whoosh. The tail on Gobo. Much easier to fix than poor, poor Sprocket. So there you go. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to pick out my top three. Because you know I'm all about doing that. My top three favorite picks. In all honesty, I might actually say Sprocket might be either one or two. The silver or the gold. Being that this is, after all, a Fraggle Rock set, I would feel so compelled to probably pick a Fraggle versus Sprocket. So, you did good, boy. You did good, but I'm going to put you as the silver. He's going to be number two. He's the second. Uh... First, actually, you know what? I'm going to go with Boober as my third favorite. And first place, the gold goes to Gobo. Maybe we'll eventually get ourselves a season, a series two. And hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, knock on Doozer's buildings, uh, we get ourselves a traveling mat. If you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, uh, like I said, if they are available now at your local comic book stores, or, 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 you can also head over to www.kidrobot.com. Head there right now, and you can see some of the cool collectibles and vinyl pieces that they produce over there. Today we were having a look, a long video later, wrapping things up. The producer's like going like this. He's he's getting his jacket on. He's like turning off all the lights. The janitor's now coming. He's starting to polish the floors. Why do the janitors are always polishing the floors whenever you see them in movies? I mean, producer's ready to leave. Uh, sorry, sorry, guys, sorry. Today, though, we were having a look at the Fraggle Rock, the new Jim Henson's Fraggle Rock vinyl figures from the folks over at Kid Robot. 
if you guys haven't done so already and want to be a part of this, you want to be part of the Parsley channel that's sprinkled alongside the glorious looking steak, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below as certainly more videos will be coming your way. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys next time.